Welcome. This is the first in a series of videos on making decisions. This is chapter 3. Excuse me, chapter 4. Uh, this is a picture of what a making a decision looks like. Um, basically, we look at some events that we call some condition. If that condition is true, we will take some actions. Uh, and then we'll continue on with our day. If the condition is false, we don't take the actions that we would take if they were true. Uh, so here's some examples. A human will decide, if it's cold outside today, I will wear a hat and coat. And if it's not cold outside, I won't take any particular action based on that. So the if statement enables the programmer to make decisions as to which statements get executed and which ones get skipped. The syntax of an if statement is the keyword if, followed by a left paren, followed by an expression that we will call some condition. It's important to note that the condition is something that can either be true or false. In the case there are multiple actions that are taken when this condition is true, you will put a list of statements inside of a block, that is, inside of open set, close set. And the actions that you take we call the body of the if statement. When there's only one action, uh, you do not have to put the set braces. So again, here is how it works. If the condition is true, then the body, the statements in the body are executed. Otherwise, if it's false, the statements are skipped. Here are some examples. Um, if you have a variable called score, if it's greater than zero, you would output passed. If, the, if it's greater than or equal to zero. Otherwise, you don't say anything about the outcome. And if the score, and, and subsequently, later we say if the score is greater than a 90, then I want to do two things. I want to set the grade to an A and then output a message, wonderful job. Uh, why don't we take a quick look at that as a program? I've kind of embellished it a little bit, but it has the basic elements. Here we have the first part, and in the second part, I uh, increased it to output both the letter grade and the word and the message. Wonderful job! So let's compile this. And let's run it. I'm going to enter a score of 50. What do you expect to happen if I enter the score of 50? Notice that if the score is not less than, um, if the score is less than 6, I say nothing here. If the score is less than 90, I say nothing here. So if I enter a score which is less than 60, you probably do not expect any output. So let's take a look. So we're going to say enter a score of 50, and the program runs and it's silent. Let's do it again. This time let's put 75. What do you expect to happen? You expect this if statement to yield output, this one not to yield output. So let's try that and see. And as you see, you got the message you passed, which corresponds to this, but these statements are skipped. Let's final try. Let's give a score of 95. Go back. What do we expect to happen? We expect this statement to be executed. And we expect both of these statements to be executed. So we do it and we see. All right. So those are some examples. Uh, notice a couple things. One is a lot of times your decisions will be based upon comparing things. So we, we know how to compare things numerically. We know that we can check for equality, for greater than, greater than or equal to, etc. So in the beginning, a lot of our decisions will look like this. All right, here's some do's and don'ts. Do not place 
a semicolon after the condition. I'll tell you now and show you later. But if you place a semicolon after the condition, you effectively end the decision right there. So that whatever comes after that semicolon is not controlled by the condition at all. Second rule, if, if there are multiple actions to be taken, be sure to put the uh, block delimiters, the set braces, around the entire body. In a matter of style, place each statement after the if line on a separate line indented so that I can easily see that this statement is controlled by this statement here is under the control of the if statement above it. They are not equal. One is subordinate to the other. So here are the relational operators. All of these you know. A couple you may not know. One is the operator for comparing for equality is not an equal sign. It is two equal signs. Why is that? Hmm. The single equal sign already is an operator called the assignment operator. And it does not involve comparison at all. It simply says give a variable a value. So be very careful there. Uh, not equal in math, we normally write an equal sign and strike through it. There's no way to do that on a keyboard. So we must put the uh, exclamation point followed by equal. And this is read not equal. Um, notice that every time you compare two numbers, the outcome is either true or false. X greater than 5 is going to be a true or false answer. So relational expressions yield a value that are, that's Boolean. We've heard about variables that have true or false values, and we say they're a type bool. All right? So here are some examples. Now, because the result of a comparison is a value, true or false, then we can actually assign the value of a comparison to a Boolean variable. Such a variable really is called a flag. It's a Boolean variable that remembers the result of a comparison. Now, it's also important to, to note that when something is true, when a Boolean variable is true, it really has the value 0, which has a name true, I mean false, or the value 1, which has a name true. So what's true or false? Any kind of integer expression whose value is 0 is considered false. So if you have an expression that's nothing but an integer, the integer is interpreted as true or false. So since 0 is false, everything that is not 0 is true. Right? Now let's take a look at some buggy if statements. Here are the ones you saw earlier. And we're going to go in and put some mistakes in so you can see what happens when you make this mistake. We will first put a semicolon after the score. Let's go back in. And let's change this if statement right here. Um, we're going to put semicolon here. I told you earlier that this will basically uh, end the if statement so that the statement that should have been controlled by the if statement announcing that you passed is no longer controlled by the if statement. Let's see what happens when we do that. And we're going to enter um, 20. Remember before when we have a value less than 60, the program was silent. Let's see what happens now. And now it's saying that you passed. Again, what's the reason? The if statement ends here. This statement has nothing to do with the if. So, so let's reverse, reverse field. Let's go in and fix that. Take this away again. And just to remind you, we're going to run it again. going to say 40 and it's silent like it should have been. Okay, The second mistake we're going to make is I want to take two actions 
if the score is greater than 90. So I'm going to uh, take the set braces away or the block delimiters away and let's see what happens. Enter 20 and notice that we have the first statement correct where we're silent but on the second one what happens it looks as if well it looks as if this statement is being executed no matter what um, and was I supposed to say wonderful job for 20 no all right, so uh, this illustrates some common mistakes that you make, and I hope you are aware of um, the pitfalls of making these mistakes. It's very common to do, so be careful. With that, we're going to stop.